Hello, investors, and welcome to our session here today. My name is Ken Rose, and this is Short Verticals. So one of the questions that came up following our session last week was, hey, Ken, how do you determine the strike width when you're doing verticals? In fact, I had several requests to do an analysis along those lines. So that'll be part of our discussion here today, part of the area that we'll be focused on. But we also want to take a look at our trade that we put on last week. That was a paper money trade, along with some possibilities with regards to an additional paper money trade here today as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get underway. And to do that, we pause, first of all, I want to pop through a few disclosures just to remind investors that options carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. The information is the information presented here is for general informational purposes only and should not be considered an individualized recommendation, endorsement of any particular security chart pattern or investment strategy. For sake of simplicity, the examples of this presentation generally do not take into consideration commission and other transaction fees, tax consideration, margin requirements, and the like. We do use the paper money software application here. This is for educational purposes only. We want to remember the successful virtual trading during one time period does not guarantee successful investing of actual funds during a later time period as market conditions do change continuously. Rolling strategies can entail additional transaction costs and additional multiple contract fees. So we want to be mindful of that as well. We'll discuss the Greeks as they come into play. Do remember that short options can be assigned at any time up to expiration, regardless of the in the money amount. And in the money option has a higher risk of being assigned early. It's important to keep that in mind because the paper money virtual trading application we use in here will not assign a short position early, which is different from what could occur in a real trading account. Of course, we always want to remember the past performance of any security or strategy does not guarantee future results or success. Well, investors, in here we talk about short verticals. We introduce the concepts. We discuss trade management techniques, exit strategies, and the like. We also like to place example trades. As I mentioned here today, though, we'll kind of be focusing in this area of short verticals in selecting a short strike price. You know, we'll, we'll go ahead and review our paper trade from last week, then we'll just jump right in and we'll talk about some of the considerations and metrics to take into, to take into mind when we're determining what is the width that we're going to be using with regards to a short vertical. And to do that, I'm going to bring up the Thinkorswim platform here. So we'll have that up here in just a moment. There we go. And while that's coming up, do you want to come over here and check in the chat window? It looks like we have Brent Morris here with us today. Great to have Brent here. Very knowledgeable investor to have there. Do feel free to send your questions over there to Brent. I'll also try to peek over there periodically to see if there's something that I can help out with as well. Well, now that we have the Thinkorswim platform up here, let's take her to have there. Do feel free to send your questions over there to Brent. I'll also try to peek over there periodically to see if there's something that I can help out with as well. Well, now that we have the Thinkorswim platform up here, let's take a look at the short vertical that we put on last week. I'm going to come up here to the top where it says monitor and click on monitor. And then underneath monitor, I'm going to come down here and choose activity and positions. Under activity and positions, here's the trade that we put in last week. And see that currently our overall profitability on the trade from a theoretical perspective is sitting at $138. And come down here and just, it looks like this was a short put vertical, which means this is bullish by nature. And would like the underlying security to stay above the short strike price. And the short strike price is at 101. Currently, the underlying security, which is COF, I believe that's Capital One Finance, is sitting at 107.27. So as long as we're staying above 101, this, this trade appears to be in pretty good shape. Let's take a look at it on the chart, though, to see where, where we're currently at in relationship to that 101 strike price. Come up here and go over to our charts right here. I'm going to put in the symbol up here, COF. And it looks like, yeah, it look, looks like we got a nice bounce here. We pulled down here. We got a nice bounce to the upside. I believe when we put this trade on, this was what's called a falling knife trade. In other words, we were entering the trade actually as the underlying security was falling rather than waiting for it to bounce. We discussed some of the advantages of that, some of the risk related to that in our session last week. That session is archived, by the way, if you wanted to go back and check that out. But we did get, an anti we did get somewhat of an anticipated bounce here. We anticipated that because as we were falling down here, we were coming down and touching upon this previous resistance level, which tends to hold up a support. Looks like it did hold up a support. We got a nice bounce up here to the upside. A little bit of a fade here earlier today, but a nice recovery here. Again, our, our, our key strike price here was, let's come back over here and double check that. Our key strike price here was 101. So that's the level we want to stay above. And 101 is sitting at about, well, it's this line right here. So as long, let me just fine tune that a little bit. It looks like that's 101.80 or 180. Let's put that right at 101. 
just so we can see that on our chart without question. Okay, so as long as we stay there, we, we do have a nice bounce off support. So this trade appears to be in good shape. We'll continue to follow up with this trade as time goes on. While we're talking about our trades, just a little bit of a review and a reminder. We started doing our short verticals back in July of 2020. It's about, that's, that, that's over three years now. We put on 182 of these paper money trades. Out of those 182, 83 have been profitable. 17, excuse me, 83% have been profitable. 17% have been losing trades. Our average return on risk, which does include the losing trades, is about 18.5%. Our average time in the trade has been about 13 and a half days. So we'll continue to monitor that part of it as well. All right, so with that, investors, let's go ahead after that review. Let's go ahead and discuss a little bit here selecting strike prices. And, and specifically with regards to selecting strike prices, we want to talk about selecting strike price width. I'm just going to come over here and grab a, see if I can grab a little scratch pad over here that we can make some notes in. You know what? I think it's probably going to be a little bit quicker. It may not, it may not look as pretty, but it may be a little bit quicker if I just draw or use a drawing tool to summarize some of these key points here. I, did, I, have, have, I, have, I did a little bit of math previously so we could do this. And just to kind of give you an idea of some of the considerations, the main, one of the main things we want with the, with the tighter spreads your return on risk generally tends to be higher than with the wider spreads. I pulled up a stock before our session started. I was looking at Disney. We'll, we'll, go, over, we'll go over and take a look at Disney. But, of course, the, 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 market's current, the market is currently trading right now, so we're seeing, so we're seeing, the, price, uh, move up, move, we're seeing the price move up and down during the day. So I, I took a specific point in time, and I looked at a short vertical, and I jotted down some numbers. I'm just going to summarize those numbers now just to kind of summarize Typically what, you'd, typically what you'd be looking at. Then we'll go ahead and take a look at Disney and look at one other factor in relationship to this discussion of selecting the width of a vertical. And let me just grab a couple number. Let me grab a little drawing tool here that I can draw with, okay? And we're going to discuss return on risk. I'm gonna see if I can get a little whiteboard up here. That might be nice, actually. Um, I think I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass on the whiteboard because it's coming up on a screen that I don't want to go to. Okay, let's just do a little right right here. Okay, so with regards to, and you'll have to, you'll have to. I'm going to apologize to you ahead of time for my drawing skills because my drawing skills are not excellent with the tool that we've got here. But we want to look at. Well, maybe I'm not going to be able to use this drawing tool, folks. You know, and the, and the, yeah, you know, and, and, and the reality is if, if it's not working on this screen, it's not going to work on our pad either. That's just kind of the reality thing. So you know what? Let's do a little bit of typing, okay? <laughs> not my first choice, but we'll take, what we'll, we'll take what we can get here, okay? So I'm going to grab this little, this little scratch pad here that we have available to us on the Thinkorswim platform. I'm going to detach this gadget. Hopefully this will make it so you, you can all see it a little bit better. And we'll come up here and give ourselves some space here. And that is interesting as well. I'm just not getting too much of a break on this stuff here. So uh, let's go ahead and type it. We'll, we'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss it verbally as we are going on, okay? So what I did is I looked at a short vertical on Disney. I looked at it a dollar wide, then I looked at it. I, I looked at it a dollar wide, then I, then, I, then I looked at it four dollars wide, okay? And let's first of all take, let's just identify this one. This is $1 wide, and then let's come over here and set this one at, actually, I think I went $5 wide on this one, okay? So keep in mind, when you, when you have the shorter vertical, you get a higher, um, you, when you have a tighter vertical, you get a higher return on risk than when you have a wider vertical. In fact, let me just come up here to the trade tab here real quick, and let's bring up Disney just so we can see this. Visually, got Disney here, and I'm going out about 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 23 days. We'll come over here and we'll do what we typically do, and we're typically choosing a strike price will provide us a return of something around one percent free state during the trade, and also a delta that provides us with a theoretical probability of success that is 70 or greater. So we'd come down here on the short put side and use the 91 strike price because the delta on the 91 strike price is 25. 
which means from a theoretical standpoint, we have about a 25% probability that the trade will get into difficulty, which leaves us a probability of success of about 75. So I'm going to, first of all, bring this up as a dollar wide. So I'm going to do a right click right here, and I'm going to choose sell, and I'm going to choose vertical, and there is our trade right there. That is a dollar wide. A little bit earlier, this was giving a 25 cent credit, but that's okay. We'll, we'll be okay using a 20 cent credit. So this is a dollar wide, 20 cent credit. Well, let's bring up a calculator and calculate our return on risk when we are $1 wide. I don't need it quite that big. Again, just to remind investors that the theoretical risk on a short vertical is the distance between the strike prices minus the credit. I'm going to just lock that in at 21 so it's not bouncing around so much. And so we are, we're $1 wide, so I'm just going to take 100 right here, and I'm going to subtract from that our credit here, which is 21. This is our theoretical maximum loss, which is 79. So if I take then, if I want to calculate my return on risk, I take the 21, I divide it by the 79, and I get a 26% return on risk. So over here, we're talking about a dollar wide. What's, what is our return on risk when we are a dollar wide on this sample? And of course, you know, when you're looking at different expirations, different stocks, different things like this, these are just meant to be general numbers. You'll, you'll find some differences for sure. These are just general numbers. But generally, our return on risk then, as we're sitting here at, is 26% when we are 26% when we are a dollar wide. What if we go to $5 wide then, okay? Then we'd be selling the 91 right here. Let's find, a, let's come up here for a second. We'd be selling the 91 and would be buying one, two, three, four, five, would be buying the 86. So I'm gonna come down here. We're selling the 91, we're staying with that, but we're gonna come down, we're gonna make this $5 wide and we're gonna be buying the 86. We're gonna take our padlock off here. Look, whoa, wait a minute, we're getting a much bigger credit here and that's true. So this is one of the advantages of going with wider is we get a larger credit. But what kind? But but what does that do to our reward to risk? We're starting off here in a dollar wide with a reward to risk of 26%. What's going to be our reward to risk here when we're five dollars wide? We'll take five dollars. We'll take 500 right here. We'll subtract from that our credit here, 61. And now our our theoretical maximum loss on this trade is 431 dollars. So we want, if we want to calculate our reward to risk on this, we take our maximum gain, which is going to be the credit, which was 61. Let me pop that up a little bit. Take our maximum gain, which is 61. We'll divide it by our theoretical maximum loss of 431, and that will give us our return on risk. So let's do that. Let's take 61 divided by 439, and our return on risk is 13%. So we do get it. We 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 want to under we want to underline the fact that yes, we do get a bigger credit, okay. But our theoretical return on risk has dropped down to thirteen percent. But now, investors, the 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 other consideration here is related to transaction fees. For for risk of for for risk of for risk of about four hundred and thirty nine dollars with regards to transaction fees. We're looking at about two dollars and forty cents. Generally speaking, these are just estimates. We get about two dollars and forty cents of transaction fees on the wider spread. In other words, the five dollar wide spread versus the one dollar wide spread, where we'd be looking at a significantly greater amount of transaction fees. What kind of an impact does that have, though, on our return on risk after transaction fees? Well, let's take a look at that here for a second. So. Now, generally, now, generally speaking, in here in the paper trading account, we use transaction fees for options of sixty cents. All right, <laughs> that is that is just for our that is just for our paper trading account. You 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 want to check your own transaction fees? It's probably going to be somewhere. It's probably going to be somewhere in that area. It may be a little bit less than that. It may be a little bit more than that. But 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 you definitely want to check out what what your own are. If we're talking about sixty cents. We have two legs of this, that's $1.20. If we have to pay transaction fees going in and out, and there's a possibility that we won't have to do that if the trade works out well. But if the trade gets into trouble, then, then, we, then we likely are going to have to do that. 
So, for the, so from a the, from a transaction fee perspective, you're talking about a dollar twenty when you enter, and a dollar four, and a dollar and a dollar twenty when you exit. So that's going to be two dollars and forty cents. So, we want to convert our reward to risk on an after transaction fee basis. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to come up here and whoops, I didn't want to do that. I would, and let's got this right here. Let's. Here's our 61. Here's our 61 credit here. I just want to make a couple of notes. Here. I want to jot down our risk on this thing. Our risk was 439. So I've got that to follow up on. So we're going to take our credit here of 61 and we're going to subtract from that um, $2.40 for transaction fees. And that gives us a, a net credit of 5860. We're now going to divide that by our 439 divided by 439. And this gives us an, an after transaction fee of 13.34. Of Basic, basically a little bit of a difference, a, a little bit of a difference here. Here we have 13% and I just rounded that down to 13%. This is probably at 13.5%. Now it's 13.34%. So a minimal impact, but still somewhat of an impact here. Okay, now we want to come over here and look at this one right here and adjust this for transaction fees for $400 of risk. So to do that, I'm going to come up here on our calculator. We're going to make an adjustment here and say, okay, now instead of one vertical, our theoretical risk on this was $74, right? Well, let's see. Let me, let me come back on that. If I remember right, our credit on that was, was 21. So our theoretical risk was 79. So how many of these verticals would we do if we were okay risking about $400? So we can take $400 right here. We can divide that by our 79. It means we'd be doing five of them. So let's just, let's, so let's just look, at, let's look at doing five of these, okay? So first of all, we want to calculate our credits, all right? And we want to calculate our net credits. So I'm just going to make a note here. We need to multiply what we have for around five because we're going to do five of these. And our point here, investors, is to, is to account for all of the transaction fees, whether we're looking at a $5 wide versus a $1 wide, and then compare our return on risk after we do that. Okay. So um, let's start off with our credit. Our credit on that early, our, if we're 79, our, our credit was 21, right? So we got 21 right here. I'm going to subtract from that. 240 for the transaction fee. So I'm going to minus two dollars and forty cents for the transaction fees. That leaves us with a net credit of 18.6. We're going to do five of these though, okay? So I'm going to take that 18.6 and I'm going to multiply that by five. So this is going to be our overall credit, is 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 going to be 93 over those over those five contracts. I'm just going to note here. 93 is our overall credit. After transaction fees, what is going to be our overall risk? What's well, going to be five of these 79s, right? I'm going to take five times, five times 79. This should be close to 400 bucks. Sitting here at 395. So that's our theoretical risk then is at 395. And again, this is after transaction fees. So I'm going to take our total credit then of 93. I'm going to divide it by the 395. So 93 divided by 395 is giving us our after transaction freeze report, and it's sitting here at 23. So, so this so this one takes a little bit of a hit, but it's still significantly higher than this one. So that so that's going to be 23.5. I'm just going to put it over there at 23. So this drops then down to 23% after transaction fees. So this is, I, I think if you look at this, if you're, if, if you're looking at transaction fees and you definitely want to consider transaction fees and you're looking at the width of a credit spread and you're, you're focusing on return on risk, which is a legitimate focus, then that, that tends to lean us towards um, tighter spreads rather than wider spreads. If you feel fairly confident with regards to the desired move, then you may lean. Then you then then there may then there de, then there definitely would be some more justification going with the wider spread, and capturing the greater credit. So, so just kind of keep that in mind. 
it's always important to take a look at return on risk, take into consideration the transaction fees related to that, then you'd be in a better place to make a decision. Now, to carry this just a step further, I want to just double check, see how we're doing on time, because this is taking a, a little bit longer than I anticipated, okay? But to take this a step further, sometimes sometimes investors that go with the go with the wider spread, when they see their trade start to deteriorate, they will put a stop loss in there. In other words, they'll put in an exit to take them out of that spread before they incur before they incur that maximum loss or or get close to that maximum loss. Well, we can take a look at that as well. There are there are several different ways to simulate this. And a lot of it would depend on where you set your stop loss, but this is also something that is a that is commonly brought up when we're looking at determining the width of a credit spread. Do we want to go wider or do we want to go shorter? So let's take a look at that here for a second here with Disney. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this because we've had this discussion. And we do want to come back up here though and look at our spread. So our short strike price here when we're when we're when we're a dollar wide. Well, whether we're dollar wide or five dollar wide, we're stay we're staying with the ninety one strike price. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. I'm going to go back to our dollar wide, so it's going to be a ninety one, ninety here, okay. And let's release this. Our credit has now because of, because the price from our credit has dropped has dropped down to twenty, okay. But that's that's what we're looking at. So let's take a. I'm going to come up here in our option chain here. Then I'm going to let's open up our side right here for just a second. Here's our option chain. I'm going to use a special tool that's available to you on the Thinkorswim platform called Theo Price. And you can implement this tool by clicking on any one of your columns right here. I, I chose the gamma column. You click on a column and you can replace what's there. Option theoretical reach, you can replace right, right you can re replace that with your Theo Price right there. You can you can choose Theo Price. I'm not going to choose it for this column because I've already done it. But that's how you bring it up on the Thinkorswim platform. But once you have the Theo price here, you can see the, the changes of, the, of your option pricing based on parameters that we put in here. Let's just say that we're setting our stop loss um, going out maybe, maybe a week and a half, and the trade has moved against us. It's moved below our short strike price, and now it's moved down to down to, down to, a, down to a dollar below that. Now we, now we could go further below that. We could do that. But in an effort to kind of compare apples to apples, but this is not an apples to apples comparison. Let's just say in an effort to make to make an apples to orange comparison, okay? Because because they're both in the fruit category, but it's not really a tight comparison. Do keep in mind that you, you probably would want to look look at these things differently. But for our discussion here today, I'm just I'm just going to use one stop loss, particularly because we have some time constraints. But hopefully, you can see the tools we're using here and be able to go ahead and make your own adjustments in analyzing it in other ways as well. But let's just say the underlying security moves through our $1 wide spread and it moves through it early enough so we can get out at a loss that's less than our maximum loss. In that kind of scenario, what kind of a situation would we be in with regards to our $1 wide spread versus our $5 wide spread? And the other the and the other part of that is 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 rather rather than have the stock move move down to this level of 190, we could have it go down two or three or four dollars. We could look at it that way as well. But we're a little bit hampered on time, so we'll go with the price moving down to ninety dollars, which pushes which pushes us basically through this spread right here. Okay, so come up here. Then I'm over here. Right here, I have my theoretical price tool because I've chosen it. I'll click on that. Here is today's date. I want to go out in time here a little bit. Let's go out a week and a half right here to the 29th. I want to move the price down to 90, so that means the price is going to have to drop down $4.09. So here's my stock price adjustment right here. I'm going to say minus $4.09 right there, and we'll lock that in. Okay, I'm going to come over here and click there. So now over here on our option prices, we have, we have what the theoretical prices would be. Okay, so let's come down and look at take a look at right here. We'll start with our. We were doing a. a let's see where did this thing go? That's Disney. We were doing a ninety-one, right? We were doing a ninety-one, ninety. Let me just jot that down. Ninety-one, ninety. Okay, so here is the ninety-one right here. Okay. So in closing this trade out, 
what would we do? Well, we'd need to buy back our 91 and then turn around and sell our 90. And that would be the debit that would be involved in the trade. So let's come over here and pull this up. So we're buying back our 91 right here. This is closing it out. And when you close it out, you close what you sold by buying it back. You close what you, you excuse me, you, you close what you bought by selling it. So we're going to buy this one back and we're going to sell this one right here. Okay. We're going to buy back our short and sell the long. That's going to be a transaction. Then we're going to buy back at 174 and we're going to sell our long then at 121. Whoops. Let me try that again at 121. That is a debit of that. That is a debit of 53. Okay. That's going to be a, a debit of 53. We did get a 21 cent credit though, right? So we're going to subtract from that our theoretical 21 cent credit, and that leaves us with a loss then of 32. Now let's take a look at the, at the $5 white spread that did give us a greater credit. We'd have to come back here and would have to buy this back for 174. That is the 91. We're buying that for X74, but now we're five dollars wide. So we're going to come up here. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. We're going to sell the 86 for 20 for 20. So we're buying that back at 174 and we're selling this for 20. So I'm going to subtract here the 20. This leaves us with a debit of 154. However, on this one, we got the bigger credit, right? We got a credit of 61. So we're going to subtract from that our credit of 61. And this leaves us with a loss of 93. So we're basically looking, so, so when, we, when we look at it from the, from the standpoint of setting a stop loss, and by the way, do keep in mind investors, whenever you set a stop loss, particularly if you're doing it based on the price of the stock in relationship to the movement of the option, and, and, you, and, you, and you could do it both ways, okay? But if you're doing it rel rel relative to stock price movement, there is no guarantee that you'll get filled at a point of forecast with regards to when, to when that stop loss is triggered. You know, you may get filled somewhere, somewhere in that area, but you may not even get filled, you may not even get filled at all. So always keep that in mind with regards to stop losses. So looking at it, so looking at it from that standpoint, then with a stop loss, um, we incur a loss here of 93 on this one versus a loss on the short vertical of 32, I believe it was. So, yeah, so that'd be that. Of course, what, what we, what we, I'm, I'm, I'm going to note this 93 though here. I want to put this 93 in here because I'm thinking about this a little bit. We want to keep in mind that this is one contract and the other one had five contracts, right? So let's multiply that out. Just to be on the conservative, just to be more on the more, just to be a little bit more on on the conservative side, okay? So our loss there was thirty two, if I remember it right. So we got thirty two. We'll times that by five. That puts us at one hundred and sixty. So that so that is a greater loss in relationship to a stop loss if we're multiplying out those five contracts. I'm thinking about that. Let me think about. Yeah, I'm 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 going to be okay with that. So. If we are incorporating a stop loss, would do we would do possibly better here, possibly better by about sixty-seven dollars if we went with the wider strike price. And again, that does that does assume that that the stop loss does get filled on that. Okay, okay. So we've 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 looked at the pluses and minus. Now there's one other category to look at, or one other consideration to take in, one other consideration to be mindful of here, and that is the delta of the short option when the trade gets it gets into trouble because the delta on the short option can be used in the event that the trade does get into some difficulty. So looking at that, let's come over here and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and reset our theoretical price guy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and reset that like this and we'll pop it in right there. And let's look at the delta here when the trade gets into trouble. Okay. So if the if the trade gets into trouble, we're we're saying the we're saying the underlying price here moves down. We're we're saying that the ninety right here is going to be one step in the money, right? At that particular point in time, and I do want to go out in time here a little bit. Well, let's 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 go and stay with this. So right now we're sitting here at ninety four. So this is the at the money option right here. Okay, 
So when the trade goes into trouble on our short option, when we're dollar wide, we're probably looking at a delta of about 56, roughly. Right there at about, right there at, a, at, a, at, about, at about 56, okay? So that's, that's, that's gonna be the delta that we're, that we're looking at here. And that's gonna be coming down here then. How far are we coming down here from that 90 in that trade getting into trouble? That's gonna be about the $4. If we come out here and we're five dollars wide, let's see, 91, 1 to the 86, we're going to be moving this down by about four. So the delta is going to be one, two, three, four. So we, so we have a delta of about 20. So this delta is a little bit is 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 about half of this delta. Why do I bring this up? Well, I bring this up because if you're looking at a dollar wide, one potential adjustment you can make is called a change in polarity. That's where you buy the short option back and you leave the long option in place. If we're a dollar wide, the delta on that long option is going to be significantly higher than if we're five dollars wide. So the pathway to recovery in the change of polarity type of a situation is going to be much shorter. In fact, the move to get back to possibly a break-even point or better is going to be less than half than if we are five dollars wide. When you're dollar wide, you tend to have a little, you tend to have more versatility in the event the underlying security moves against you. Okay, so those are so those are some of the key aspects in the those are some of the key aspects in determining the width of a of a short vertical. Okay, and as we go on, we generally stay um, a dollar wide in here. But hey, if you want to put on some that that are that are five dollar wides, I'm okay with that. We can go ahead. We can go ahead and do that. Put in some stop losses, and then over time, just kind of assess how those how those types of situations are performing for us. Okay. All right. Well, investors, we also wanted to do a trade here for today. Let me just come take come over here one quick peek over there in the chat window, see if I can maybe help out with some questions where I have advantage of having the platform right here with me. Again, a big thanks to Brent for helping out over there. And let's see. Well, let me try this a little bit more. You know, our, how about it? I was hoping that my chat window would scroll for me, but it's not, it's not scrolling for me, but that's okay. Looks like Brent has. It looks like Brent's got you guys taken care of. So again, a big, a big thanks to Brent over there. All right. Well, let's take a look at putting on a trade here for today. Then, all right. And to do that, we're going to come up here to. Um, I'm going to open up our left hand side over here. We've seen that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we'll close up our scratch pad here. So just to, so just kind of summarizing, from a return on risk standpoint. The one dollar wide appears to be it uh, appears to have the greater balance of positivity, I guess you could say. If you set a stop loss, and do keep in mind that when you that when you do set a stop loss, you're not you're not letting the probabilities play out. So you put yourself in a situation where you are you're, where you're a little bit more likely to fall um, outside of the theoretical probabilities of success. Okay, but if you do set a stop loss, then, then that type of a scenario can possibly treat you better with regards to the with regards to the five dollar wides in relationship to the one dollar wide, based on our analysis here. Okay. All righty. So let's go ahead and collapse this here for just a second, though. And I want to pull up. Here's a here is the S and P five hundred. I just I just wanted to bring this up to see if we had an earnings trade because we talked about this a little bit last week when we were talking about the basics of short verticals. And we talked about short call verticals. We talked about short put verticals. One of the things we talked about was possibly doing a short vertical in relationship to an earnings situation. We're looking for the underlying security to stay within a certain zone. Okay. And I've got over here that we have Cisco that's coming out with earnings after the market here today. I was looking at the chart. I was also looking at the liquidity of the underlying options. I thought this might be a good example. However, I, did, I didn't look at everything. We also have PANW, have BBWI, and we have Walmart. Cisco is just at the top of the list. Okay, so I'm not I'm not recommending Cisco. What I'm recommending is you is you is you take note of the process we're following here. Do keep in mind the session is recorded, so you, technically you don't you don't need to take notes, but but become familiar with the process we're doing here. Then come then then look at the S and P 500. Find one of your own. It 
it could it could very well be and and is likely a better situation we're looking at here with regards to Cisco and run the numbers and the like in the same way that in the same way that we'll do here now okay so let's go over here I'm going to click on Cisco here and we'll collapse I'm going to delete this because we had our discussion on that and come over here to the chart for Cisco so here is our chart for Cisco I'm going to delete these lines here so we've got a fresh Drawing set right there. Okay, so here's Cisco. Now, uh, for those of you that are new here, and I do see a few new names, and I want to welcome all of, all of those of you, all of the, all of those that you are here new. Um, you know, one of the things I noted with with regards to our last sessions is there were a fair amount of requests saying, "Hey, Ken, can we look? Can we compare that vertical to a long vertical? Um, can we look at what the situation would be if we did a this kind of a trade and and this kind of a trade?" Well, in here we focus on short verticals, but there is an area where we have a whole lot of other stuff that we currently teach. And in fact, let me just pull that area up here for you. Here we are right here. So you can go to schwab.com forward slash Schwab coaching. And you can see, you know, right now I'm teaching short verticals. Following, following our session right here today, we have managing a portfolio, trading breakout patterns, market and sector analysis and on and on okay so you so you so you've got a lot of stuff also if you if you if you if you subscribe to the trader talks channel then you'll then you'll be then you'll have access to a page like this which is really nice this is a nice way because you, you can come in and look at playlists if i come over here and open up playlist right here you can see that we have we have we we have this is this is a playlist for trade management advanced charting Trading the Trend, Spotlight, all these other ones. There should be one in here for short verticals as well. Just look at the titles on your playlist right here. This gives you an idea of everything. Here is short verticals. I think we only have one in there now. We'll now have two, as well as selecting option strategy. So this, this is a great place to go as well. So, so a lot of different resources. So when you're thinking about, okay, we're talking about short verticals, Ken, but hey, I want to look at something else, okay? Well, please stay here with us with regards to short verticals because we love having you here, okay? But do keep in mind that you can go into some of these other areas and get some additional detail with regards to some of these other strategies and the like. All right, let's come back over here then. And let's see. Let me just let me pull this down this way. There we go. Okay. So notice on my chart here, I've got what's called the market maker move. Now on the Thinkorswim platform, for those of you that aren't familiar with Thinkorswim platform, if you, if you pull up a stock here, we're looking at Cisco and you click on here to the trade tab, you'll see this right here, this is market maker move, okay? That is your market maker move. But this is, a, this is an algorithm, it's a proprietary algorithm that's only available through, the, through Charles Schwab Thinkorswim. And it gives you an estimate, and that's all this is an estimate, of how far the stock could go up or down in relationship to an upcoming event. How effective is it? Well, what I would encourage you to do is would be to paper trade using that to make your own determination on that. It definitely is not perfect. I'll show you an example of stock that illustrates how it can be not, not perfect. But however, we have had some success in here using it in our paper money account, but we've also got blown out a few times as well. But nonetheless, we'll go ahead and use this with regards to our analysis. So you can take the existing price right here and you can add the market maker move to it, subtract the market maker move from it, and you'll, you'll, have the, you'll have these price points on your chart. Now you can also bring this up on your chart, okay, by using a customized thing script link. And what I'll do is I'll put that customized thing script link in the notes or the description for our session here today. So following our session, give it maybe 30 minutes to an hour, look at the bottom of the YouTube window. The bottom of the YouTube window, you'll see a description. Within that description, you'll see the word more. When you click on more, we'll open it up to a more detailed description. When you look at that more detailed description, you go in there and you'll see a paragraph description for today's session. And below that, you'll see links used for today's session. And one of them is going to be this market maker move. And you can use that link to incorporate this on the, on, on, the, on the Thinkorswim platform. Now, additionally in here, we, we've got labels on our chart here. There'll be a link in there if you'd like to use these labels. And also on this column right here that gives you the earnings, there will, there, there will be a link. So there, there will be an earn text link that you can use in columns. This is nice because you can sort through 
500 stocks and just bring the four or five up here to the top. They're going to be coming out after the market the next day or so. These labels are beneficial fundamental standpoint. This is part of the market maker move. You can see on here, investors, what are we trying to do here? Well, we're going to, we're going to look at our market maker move here. If we stay within this zone and we sell a short call vertical up here and we do a short put vertical down here, then we should have a successful trade. Now, the reason that we would consider a trade such as this is because of the potential return over a relatively short period of time. Well, let's take a look at that. I want to note we want, we want to be above 55.50, so I'm going to choose 55.50. We want to be above that, so we're probably going to want to do a, a 56, 57 short call vertical up here. And down here, we want to be below 51. So we're probably going to want to do a, on the put side, we're probably going to want to do a, a 51, 50 on the put side. So let's see exactly what that would look like then. I'm going to come up here to the trade page. And here we are on the trade page. Let's open that trade page up. And now, investors, when, we're, when, we're, when we are doing something like this over earnings announcement, we don't really go by the deltas because earnings can be so, uh, so, so volatile and, and uncertain. We're just going to use the market maker move, okay? So let's go ahead and start on the put side. And on the put side, we said that we wanted to be at 51 or lower. So we'll come down here to 51 right here. And I'm going to do a right click on 51. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to choose sell. And what we're talking about here is an iron condor. When you do a short call vertical with a short put vertical and the, and the, and the, short, and the short strike prices are separated, that's called an iron condor. So I'm going to click on iron condor right there. And you can see there's our short put vertical. We need to adjust the strike prices on our short call vertical, right? Because we want it to be above 55. So I'm going to come in here and adjust my short call vertical. I'm going to come in here and set this at 56. And 57, at 56, 57 here. Okay, there, there we have it right there, okay? So this is our short put vertical. I'm going to move this over to the Analyze page here quickly. So we can see our break even points. We'll take a look and see what that looks like on the chart. Though. So I'm going to come down here and choose analyze trade on the Thinkorswim platform. There's our trade. Here's our risk. Here's our reward. Here is our break even points right here. Okay. Let's see what those break even points look like on the chart. To do that, I'm going to come over here and choose set slices to chart. Like so, and those are breaking points. So we're, so we're a little bit higher on the upside. We're sitting right on it on the downside. So as long as we stay within that zone, what, what, what would we be looking at? Well, potentially exist here, folks, for a 31 credit. Let's take 100 right here. Let's take this off and go 100 minus 31 is 69. So I take 31 divided by 69. That's a 44% return. That's our theoretical possibility. Because keep in mind, we, we have the whole credit, we, but we can only lose on one side or the other. So that's how we calculate our, our numbers there. So investors, what does that tell us about this trade? It tells us it's a very, very aggressive and very, very speculative trade. Anytime you get a big return like that. And what was the time frame on those options? When do they expire? In two days on Friday. So 44% return over two days, that tells you very speculative, very aggressive. Now, we don't have time to put the trade on here during our discussion. What I'll do is I'll put the trade on following our discussion. Then we'll go ahead and discuss to see how this trade turned out. I do want to show you a, this is our market maker move. Let me give you an example of a stock that blows through a market maker move here. We just had this occur here today, and that's Target. I'm not sure what the market maker move is. Now, this, this is the market maker move is today, but before the earnings announcement was sitting out here, I'm certain that this thing just blew out of the market maker move. If that occurs on our trade, then we'd be sitting here with a maximum loss. So you want to be totally okay with the potential maximum loss on these. All right, investors, let's go ahead and wrap things up here for today, okay? We talked about what we want to talk about here today. Hey, just a little heads up and reminder, you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at KenRoseCS. Love to see you over there on Twitter. Also, I'd encourage you to follow Brent on Twitter. He posts a lot of great information over there. That's going to be at Brent Moore's CS also. 
Mark it in your calendar later on today here at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Brent teaches an excellent trading growth and value session. So note that as well. And just a couple of notes here to, to practice what we've got going on here. Looks like our next webcast protected. I'm not sure if that's accurate. So don't let's let's not. I, I, I think we actually look at what our next webcast is. I'm not sure that this one is correct. OK, but do keep in mind the other resources that you have here in relationship to Schwab.com Learning Center. OK. Just to remind investors to keep in mind that our that that, that, we, that this is this is for demonstration purposes only. It is not a recommendation or endorsement. And that, keep in mind that short options can be assigned at any time up to expiration, regardless of the in the money amount. That's always important to keep in mind because we do discuss that in here. All right, everybody. So hey, it looks like we have completed our discussion today. Again, I'll swing back and. Put that earnings trade on in there, and then we'll spend a little bit more time looking at that in detail in our next session. Hope you have a great uh, afternoon, a great week, and a fantastic rest of your week here today. And hope to see you back here again next time. Bye, everybody. We'll catch you later, and thanks again.